you go. All right, so today we're here with Dash and Simon, and this is their Roadmap to Success video. And um, I just wanna go over some of the first things that the Guardian wanted to work on, which is mostly getting the dogs to get along. They do get along, obviously. We have them right here um, on camera together. So they get along for the most part, but um, we start to have some dynamic shifts in the home. Uh-uh, Simon, sit. Sit, come over here. I'm not gonna get you. Come on, buddy. Sit. Sit, good boy. So we really just wanna help the dogs start to look to um, their guardians for leadership and direction instead of needing to establish that pack order on their own. And we're just gonna do that through rules and structure. So when the first rules being for the next 30 days, no furniture, on, uh, the dogs aren't allowed on the furniture or the bed. And that's really to help them not see themselves as equals, but to start respecting their guardians as the leader in the home. And again, we're not using anything um, to be kind of dominant or use any dominance theory. This is just asking them to get off the couch. You can use the escalating consequences to help them stay off the furniture. Simon, sit. We're playing Simon Says. <laughs> sit. Good boy. Much better. He says, I really want the treats. Um, and so one of the first things being no furniture and then asking them to start to sit. Simon, off. Good boy. Sit. All gone. So he's starting to learn already. That was good. That was a good demonstration of him starting to learn that he should be off the furniture as a new rule. Okay, so um, next one is having them sit before they go through doorways. Um, that will be an important one. It's a little one that just helps remind them that they need to look to you for leadership right before they go out the door. So they're not bursting through the door and they're able to learn how to gain that self-control and it's okay, don't worry about it. Um, hey buddy, we're wrapping up a video, okay? Um, so uh, one of the things will be just teaching them that self-control and that kind of discipline so they don't just start to see an impulse control and look to you first. So that's gonna help them with that. And um, then after 30 days, you can start having them go on the furniture with permission. So that just means that having them use our petting with a purpose technique, having them sit first, and then you can have them in, up on the furniture, but have them invited up. And you don't want them to just ever start jumping up on the furniture on their own. <laughs> um, and that's gonna be the part of the new dynamics is so they never go back to just jumping on the furniture. They can be up there if they have permission. Now, since the bed is a source where they started to have some disagreements, um, that might be something that you don't want them to ever go back to sleeping on the bed. You might be happy to just have them sleep on the floor in the bedroom with you. I'll let that you decide that after 30 days and how they're doing. Um, but it is something that you can always give them permission to be back on the bed after 30 days if you think that the dogs can handle that responsibility and they do well with that. Um, the next one is, again, using the petting with a purpose, meaning that every time you pet them, you're rewarding that behavior. So you wanna make sure that um, you're asking them to sit before you give them attention each time. And again, that's helping them look to you as a good leader and teaching them, again, that impulse control and it helps keep that good dynamic in the house. Now, as a quick reminder for how to handle the situation if uh, Simon has a bone, if he growls, um, to tell Dash to kind of stay away and be respectful of his space. You wanna make sure to actually be helping him have that be a good boundary for him. So go ahead and it's okay, don't worry about it. Um, you wanna make sure that you're helping Dash actually learn to be more respectful. So if you need to have her be the one to walk away and um, uh, so have her be the one to learn how to walk away if you need to use a leash timeout to help her stop following him around the house. That's what you want to do. Um, and then, do you need me to move this, buddy? Yes. Go. It's okay, don't worry about it. There you go. Um, and then the leadership exercise, I want to refer to the video above this one for you to um, watch that as a tutorial, but I want you to do that for the next two weeks each day with each dog. Remember to only do one dog at a time. So put one in outside or in their crate, just because it won't, it wouldn't be fair for them to be competing with each other. For the treat, you want them to be more focused on you. Simon, good boy. Um, then the next part will be then going down to doing this every couple of days for the following two weeks and then doing it once or twice um, in a month for the next year. That's just reinforcing the leadership dynamic and helping them stay as a nice cohesive pack and working well together in the family. 
um, I want to remind you that you can use that um, escalating consequences and those invisible boundaries anywhere in the home. So you could use this to establish a boundary by the front door or around the dining room table. If you were to try to do the door exercise, we can we call this um, claiming the door. So if you go on our website, dogonproblems.com, click on dog training tips on the left hand side. On the right hand side, there's a search bar. If you type in claiming the door, you'll see a bunch of videos that we have done where we use that invisible boundary to essentially establish that around the front door. So you could use that as a guide if that's something you ever want to include in the house. Um, and then lastly, I wanna remind you that everything you do um, trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.